So I turn again, <laughs> so that I can point to different parts of the apparatus before you see the whole thing. So uh, where it was aimed at this, that's the main working part of the apparatus. Once I turn the lights off and turn this properly on, then you'll be able to see um, what it does. Um, I'm moving this around so that you can see the coils. These are the coils that generate the magnetic field. Um, they are in an arrangement called the Hamilton arrangement. I will uh, have it be part of your lab activity where you go through the analysis of magnetic field due to Hamilton coil. So, so these coils produce magnetic field in that area. And um, this uh, nice nifty apparatus is controlled with this, um, this it's a, everything built into one. Uh, in this one device, you can, um, so, so I turned it on. That's why you see that glowing thing there. What, as soon as it's on, that filament glows. And uh, right now, everything else is off. This knob is what I use to control how much kinetic energy the electrons have as they come out. And these knobs are what I can use to apply a voltage between those two plates, two tiny plates you see above uh, top and bottom. Um, I can use that to apply an electric field to the electrons as they come out so that they bend. So that's, this is one set of controls I can use. And these are the set of controls I can use to control the current going to the, the white coils here that controls the magnetic field. So, so that's the apparatus. And I guess it's hard to set up the shot where you can see both the controls and the experimental region equally well. So, so I'm just gonna uh, describe what I'm doing with the controls as I do it. Let me turn the lights off. All right, so we are back. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to increase the kinetic energy of the electrons as they come out, so that you will see a beam of electrons uh, as they come out. Uh, on the knob, it actually says accelerating voltage. That's kind of what it is. So um, the second image is the one in the mirror. Don't get confused by the mirror. Um, and I can bend, so right now it's arranged in a way that it hits the glass pretty quickly. It doesn't <laughs> go anywhere. Um, uh, I can bend it a little bit using the electric bill. So I can turn on the uh, deflecting voltage. Those are the voltage on the, the plate you see and use that to bend the beam up. Or um, if I change the polarity and I can bend the beam down. So kind of what you'd expect. Oh, you know, this is how you are, um, you, uh, well, not you are. <laughs> if you are living in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, and you had a TV uh, called, also called the CRT, a cathode ray tube, that's how those things work. But most people these days have an LCD TV or OLED or whatever, so <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, so that's one way to bend, but um, the, it's not all that interesting. What we do more with this is uh, applying a magnetic field. And the, the force that magnetic field applies is different from the, it's different in character, it's different in how it changes as the electron moves. So here the, um, the yeah. So here when I apply the, so I'm gonna apply the, the deflecting voltage again. When I apply the deflecting voltage, that's kind of all you saw. It deflected a little bit and then that's it. Um, even if uh, I had a larger area over which to apply voltage or apply electric field, it would look like a parabola that falls in the direction of electric field. With the magnetic field, it gets more interesting. So I'm going to now turn on the, the current to the, to the coils and see what happens. Um, Guess does the direction matter? Uh, I turn the switch to one that says clockwise. Let me turn on the current and see what happens. So this is the path of the, so, you know, ignore the thing in the mirror. Uh, so <laughs> for, I wish I had taken off, I can't take off the mirror, it's glued on. Um, 
Oh, let me do this. I'm going to put a paper over the mirror. That way we don't get. I think it's, uh, um, you know, when you are here in person, it's easier to see that it's a mirror. But when the image quality is poorer, it's harder to see what's uh, real and what's uh, just an image in the mirror. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I, I put a paper over the mirror so you don't see the reflection anymore. So um, yeah, so this is, as I increase the current, you see that the electron is going in a smaller circle. Uh, and are there two circles? Oh, you know, there are uh, two. Um, uh, uh, so you actually see two disks, uh, one smaller one and one the larger one. And uh, I guess let me not say too much um, in case you want to figure it out for yourself. I think I have an explanation why you see that, but I'll just leave that there. Um, but you know, as you turn this, you see those um, electron beams um, moving in circle at different um, radius. It, um, this is an illustration of the magnetic force. It, um, it causes those charged particles to move in circles. And uh, if I make the, so I turn the switch to counterclockwise, then it bends the other way, which, you know, it's not very interesting here because <laughs> the glass stops it pretty much immediately. So let me leave it here. Um, so somewhere here so that you can see the beam path for a little bit. So, so yeah, this is a movement of a charged particle under a magnetic field. And um, you can actually, so one of the things that I want you to demonstrate is one where um, I think your textbook um, in the section for magnetic force talks about particles moving in helical path if it has some initial. So here, this is the setup where the initial velocity of the particles is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Magnetic field points perpendicular to the coil. So, um, so it's moving in circle, it uh, kind of, if I move this around a little bit, you see the circular path comes, uh, you can see that the circular path comes back to where it started. Now I can do this. I can turn this uh, bulb, I can tilt it a little bit so that the initial velocity of the charged particle is not perpendicular to the magnetic field. Then see what happens. That's the helical path that um, your textbook talked about. Let me increase the magnetic field a little bit so that there's a more room to uh, for the helical path to happen. Uh, so we do this increase the magnetic field. That's the helical path that the electrons follow. So interesting. Um, <laughs> Um, so for doing purpose of making measurements for this lab, I would make it so make it sure so that the path that falls back to itself. It doesn't follow that weird helical path. Uh, so well not, well, not weird, interesting helical path. So that's uh, pretty much it. Um, in, so, I mean, this is a fun lab to do in person and there's a lot to learn and be careful about measurements. I'll try to capture some aspect of that in the um, in the activities that I still need to write up. Um, so for today, what I want you to end with is uh, some demonstration of a magnetic force. I mean, you have some in the recorded lecture videos, but uh, while I have this apparatus, there's uh, actually some things I can demonstrate. So, um, so this. Is, uh, yeah, you can already see I'm bringing something new. Uh, this is a neodymium magnet. It exerts a fairly large magnetic force. It, it's, it produces a pretty large magnetic uh, field uh, compared to its size. And I can, and this is like a bar magnet more or less. And I can use that to apply force on that ring. Like I can bring one pole closer reducing the magnetic field. So making it so that the beam doesn't bend as much. Oh, wait, you can't really see it. Yeah, maybe. Um, or I turned it around and you can now increase the magnetic field so that the beam uh, curves more. And um, there are other fun things you can do. You can um, 
I guess this isn't quite strong enough. You can uh, use this magnet to repel the beam. And there's a, I think I posted somewhere about the magnetic bottle. That's uh, the principle. I, this is a bigger, stronger neodymium magnet. Um, the, that's the, there's a principle on which this repulsion works. The current, uh, the, the um, curious or the interesting thing here is that this repulsion, it happens with both poles. So right now I have one pole, which is repelling the beam away. And now when I turn it around, you can see that it's turned around because the way the beam um, distorts is different, it's the other way, but it's still repelled. Uh, it has to do the magnetic field gradient and it's kind of a cool thing. But um, I, I think this is easy, uh, better to see and play with it in person. It, just looking at it through a video, it's, uh, I imagine it doesn't have quite the same impact. Um, the second thing, as long as we are here, I can show you is um, uh, this uh, light bulb thing. Let me turn the lights on. I think for this part, uh, it doesn't have to be that dark. So let me turn the lights on. Gonna turn that off. Oops, um, forgot to turn off the accelerating voltage. That's why the beam was turned off. So this light bulb here is, um, it, it's a, demo that's specifically built to, to illustrate magnetic force on a current carrying wire. This is a bit of an unusual light bulb in that the, single, the filament is basically a single strand of wire. So, uh, so when you turn it on, you can actually see the, oh, yeah, I was a little bit afraid about this. Um, Okay, I think if I hold it this way, it'll expose correctly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you can see the filament, the hot filament, and you can, uh, okay, that's where the current carrying wire is. Now, if I bring a magnet nearby, pushing away the compass, um, if I bring a magnet nearby, you should see that it, uh, it affects that filament. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, it's uh, the so at DC, it's not quite as easy to see. The demonstration becomes more. Uh, let me just try one more time from the other side. Yeah, at DC, it's not as dramatic. Um, it's uh, becomes more dramatic when it's on AC mode. So let me turn it to AC and show it. Um, you can see the, the filament kind of get wider. And it, you know, it doesn't actually get wider. What it's doing is it's vibrating. It's, a, it's a vibrating from one position to the other because on AC, the current is a flipping direction. So as the current changes direction, it, um, it, the direction in which the wire was deflected changes. So, um, um, on the video and both when you're looking at it in person, you can just uh, see there's a broader looking filament because the filament is vibrating at like either 60 or 120 Hertz between the two uh, maximum positions. So um, the downside of AC is that you can uh, quite see the direction dependence of the, the pole and the direction of the current flowing. Because uh, yeah, with the DC, you can see that Maybe see that if I bring one pole closer, it bends one way. And when I flip the magnet around and bring the other pole closer, it bends the other way. But um, it's a more subtle movement, it's harder to see. So, um, so I think that kind of covers it, that's all. Let me just uh, stop this guy here and uh,